so y'all know I'm on it. I'm, I'm on top of the uh, Colin Kaepernick protesting and everything that's involved with sports, dealing with the protests, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this was a good little segment. Uh, I mean, it's how can we expect a white coach to understand the problem unless he talks to his players about certain situations that they have been through? It? How can we expect Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, who I heard that he's told his players they had to stand for the anthem? How can we expect him to relate or understand what's going on with? Cops killing blacks and minorities. I can we expect them to understand that, so their comments are not shocking. Um, but I like what Jerome better said, and also Trevor Maddox when he told about the Million Mass March story when he was with the Redskins. If they all stick together, it's nothing a team or the league can do. So we'll see what it do. But this is a good segment. Trevor Maddox almost lost me, but him and Jerome better. Had some good words on it. In with some very interesting comments from Clemson head coach Dago Sweeney. Here to talk about it tonight on college football analyst Trevor Maddich and the Hall of Famer Jerome Bettis. Jerry Jones had some very interesting comments about Colin Kaepernick's protest. We'll get to that in just a moment. But as you both know, this protest has not really enveloped college football the way it has the NFL. But Coach Sweeney was asked about it today at his media availability. And this is what he said. I think everybody has a right to express themselves, um, you know, in that regard. But I don't, I don't think it's good um, to be a distraction to your team. I don't think it's good to use the team uh, as, as the platform. I, I totally disagree with that, you know. Uh, you didn't use the team as the platform. Nobody's really asked me about uh, Kaepernick or whatever. But, and that's disrespectful. You know, what you I, mean, uh, or whatever you know, his name, what's I, going I, I on? I totally disagree with that. You know, not not his uh, protest, but I just think there's a right way to do things. How is it a right and way I, to protest? It's a protest. Right right. Never have, never will. And uh, two I think wrongs don't make a right, but they go here killing people. More division. They cops supposed to be protected. That's, that's my. It's sad to me uh, to see what's going on in this country. It's sad to hear your comments. Uh, I think it creates more division. I think there's a better way. I, how about, you know, he called press conference. Express your feelings. Everybody show up. Talk about it. Express yourself. Go and be a part of of, of things and protest them and, and do That's great. I mean, yeah, I think everybody has that right, and, and I, I certainly respect that, but but I just think that um, uh, this just creates more division. And, uh, you know, that's that's what I hate to see. Another one who don't so get that it. was earlier today from Dabo Sweeney. Right. Trevor, your takeaways from his comments. Well, I think what he said was an important principle, that you need to separate the process from the core fundamentals of what the protest was about. Mm -hmm. Because I agree with him when he says that, that you shouldn't use the team as a platform. Because then what are the ramifications after that? Well, we agree, I think all of us, that this is an important issue. It needs to be mm -hmm. talked about. But what about the next guy that's got an issue that is his own thing. And I don't think it's appropriate that a, a football player or any athlete unilaterally drag his teammates and the brand of his team into the political firestorm of his choice. You know, about 10 years ago, uh, 10 years ago or so, uh, the NBA team supported the Latino community, where they, they wrote on their jersey, for example, the Phoenix Suns, Los Suns. Yeah. The Miami Heat, Los Heat. Organizational decision. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Unilaterally, I think the process needs to be done in a different way. Well, when you're looking at a social issue, there's never a good time or a good place uh, to make a stand. So I do understand why, why he's doing it. I understand what he's doing. Now, I wouldn't have necessarily done this, but I think it needs to be brought to the forefront. That discussion needs to be had. Now, the problem that we're having is that it's become more of an issue of the flag and not an issue of what needs to be addressed Tell them what, bus. What, what we need to talk about in this country and have the discussion that frankly is Bring a home, bus. discussion Tell them bus. to have. But I do understand the, the, the argument uh, that Dabo Sweeney is saying, but he has to also understand that you can't uh, just have the press conference and 
you say when you say you think everything goes away. It's just not that easy. When it's such a critical issue, you have to make a stance. Now, about your point in terms of bringing your teammates involved, that's what he is. He's he's bringing them involved only from the standpoint that they have to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something he's doing irrespective of them. He's 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 taking a knee. It's not he's not asking his teammates to do anything. He's not asking them to speak on it. He spoke to them, ex addressing them, explaining to them why he did it. But I don't think that he's asking them to be voiceful in the demonstration. He's doing this on his own. In uniform on game day. And I think that's where we separate from the core issue in that process. But here's what we agree, I think, Jerome, and, and that is you talk about the discussion. Mm -hmm. This is critical because I hear too many people trying to say things like, Kaepernick should shut up and throw the football. Right? right, I know people that won't go to see movies or buy music from artists that they disagree with politically. Mm -hmm. To me, shouting down and shutting down a, a differing political view is the opposite thing. We should have more voices. We should add voices to the conversation, not stifle voices. Mm -hmm. Here's one more voice I want to bring into the discussion. The owner of the most valuable and visible team in the National Football League speaking out on one of the most visible displays we've seen the NFL players take in quite some time. Here's Jerry Jones. We strongly strongly uh, support the flag uh, in, in every way we su uh, support, uh, and this is, it, it's almost ridiculous to be saying, uh, the people that uh, for generations... See, when they bring up the flag, they're missing the point. Uh, they're so missing the, the protest and the point of the protest. Of the millions of people on television. Uh, Jerry Jones is the last the person to be talking about. On television. Is a, that Bush? Uh, Come on, very man. Significant thing. And uh, I'm for it being used in every way we can uh, to support. Uh, the report uh, the says great, that he told his players they better stay. In our society, and that's good old that psh, crack the whip on uh, The flag, and uh, uh, there, there's, there's no reason not to go all out right there. And for anybody to use. Uh, uh, parts of that visibility to do otherwise is uh, really uh, uh, disappointing. That's a coach first, then an owner, Sweeney and then Jones. I want to talk about the players that are most affected by it all, the guys in the locker room. Those two voices can say something you guys can use in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Tell me how this goes over in the locker room. Well, as a player, you understand that you know, the owner, he's going to have a totally different view on this. A slave it's master. A business for him. So he doesn't want his business or the shield want to lose the money. by this display. So you have to understand the dynamics that's coming from there. So as a player, I wouldn't I wouldn't be moved in any way. By this. this is something that I would expect to hear from the owner of the franchise. Now, as a player, I, I, on his team, I have to now understand how he feels about it. Now, if I take the next step, I understand that there may be uh, ramifications from what I do next mm -hmm. because of his vocal stance on this issue. You know what? Back at the time of the Million Man March, remember that? Mm -hmm. I was playing for the Redskins, and we were coming back from a road game on the West Coast. And the guys on the team wanted to go to the march. But it was the day, Monday, where we would watch tape uh, of, the, of the previous game. And the coach wanted the guys to watch tape. We'll watch tape on Tuesday or, or not at all. We're going to the march. And both sides dug in. And I spent probably two hours on that plane doing nothing but listening in the back. And I heard stories that I'd never heard before. And That's I had perspective right. that I didn't really understand. Yeah, before. it's real and in the really field. The problem between the management of the You won't know nothing until you live in this black skin. Right. Yeah. And the players, if, if we'll hear they about don't it. come together and if the management doesn't respect the players' desires on something that resonates so deeply, yeah. then it'll just it'll destroy the locker. Absolutely. Yeah. So they ended up letting him go to the million man mark. Absolutely. And you know what? You come in Tuesday, and you watch the film. Yeah. That's the result. Res respect the emotion there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What a great personal story there from Travel. Have these got That's right. If they stick together, I'm trying to tell you. If they stick together what they gonna find them all, suspend them all? It's, it's the message, it's what's being protested. It's what's hitting home to a lot of the players that's predominantly a black league. Come on, man. Stand with Cat. 